So today we're going to play adventure number four from the Castle Ravenloft board game. And as always, I've already gone through and set everything up, shuffled everything. So we're pretty much ready to go. But adventure number four, let's talk about what we're going to be doing. So it's called Daylight Assault. And it says the heroes must, uh, or the heroes enter the dungeon crypts early in the morning to steal Strahd's treasures while he sleeps. So this one's a little bit different because uh, like in the first adventure, you've been captured by Strahd, taken into his tomb and you have to escape. In the second one, you have to find the icon of Ravenloft. In the third one, you have to uh, destroy Clack and his artifact. But this time we're just going treasure hunting. So we're entering into the dungeon of our own free will and just going and searching for treasure. So we also have a time track on this one, similar to adventure number one. But instead of, uh, I think adventure number one had five uh, time tracks, this one has seven. So every time we draw a white tile, we have to remember to advance the, uh, the sun tracker forward. And when it gets all the way to number seven, see it's marked there, uh, plus one encounter card. But there's a couple things that happen. So uh, when you move the sun token onto the last circle, the sun sets and Castle Ravenloft becomes a more dangerous place. So once that happens, for the rest of the adventure, each player draws an encounter card at the start of his or her villain phase. And according to the uh, clarifications, the Castle Ravenloft adventure clarifications, that encounter card that you draw is in addition to a, any encounter card that you would have drawn for not exploring. So if you don't explore, you draw two encounter cards instead of one. Uh, the other thing that happens when the sun sets is that if you have a treasure card and you use it, that treasure card cannot be counted towards the 12 treasure items that we're trying to find. And the way the rules read, that only happens after sunset. So uh, before, before sunset, we can still take advantage of our treasure items and use them. And we just put them in a separate discard pile, I suppose, because those still count towards the 12. And the victory condition is that uh, you win the adventure when any number of heroes escapes the dungeon with a total of 12 treasure cards. So one hero can end his or her turn on the start tile with all 12, or three heroes can carry four each that kind of thing. And then usually, as usual, you die if you, if any, if any hero dies and you don't have any healing surges remain. So, you have come up with a daring plan. Enter Castle Ravenloft during the day while the vampire Lord Strahd sleeps and steal as many magic items as you can. Of course, not all of the monsters guarding the castle rest during the day. All right, so before we get started, we're going to draw our treasure items for each of our heroes, starting with Arjun. He'll go first. So let's see what we get for Arjun. And right away, we got an item, so we can keep this. It says, uh, place the Glyph of Warding marker on your tile. The first monster that moves to that tile takes one damage. Okay, and, uh, and even though I said I'm drawing for Arjun, of course, I can assign items any way I want but we'll go ahead and give that to Arjun. And again, even though this says discard after using it, uh, the way the rules read, it's, it's uh, you know, it says once you move the sun token onto the last circle, the sun sets and Castle Ravenloft becomes a more dangerous place. So after that happens, these three things apply. So this rule here, if a hero uses a treasure card that is discarded after it is used, that doesn't apply until after sunset. So we need to keep that in mind so we don't, uh, hoard all of our treasure items and, and not spend them if, if they would if they would help us So let's draw a treasure item for Alyssa, and she also got a treasure item So that's lucky Usually you end up drawing two or three cards before you get a treasure item So we'll go ahead and put that back and we'll start the adventure So as always there's nothing you can do except move at the beginning So we're just going to go ahead and move And we're going to draw a dungeon tile for exploring and place down that dungeon tile. It does have a black triangle on it, so we'll have to have an encounter. But first, 
we get a, a monster for Arjun. It's going to be a Cobalt Skirmisher, so we'll put that down right there. Go to our table of monsters, grab a Cobalt Skirmisher, put it down on the bone pile of the newly placed tile. And before we move too far, I'm going to go ahead and start updating my sheet. Because I like to keep track of these things. It really does help me out tremendously if I get confused and I can't remember if I did something. I just refer back to my turn tracker and it helps. So this uh, using a surge token has no context in the for, for whoever goes first. Um, he did move. Uh, the, the attack action has no context in the first turn. The drawing a treasure item has no context in the first turn. He did explore. Got a, uh, a black tile. Placed down a cobalt skirmisher. And there is no blessing or condition yet. Uh, we will have an encounter. And the first monster that will activate will be a cobalt skirmisher under Arjun's activation. Under Ar Arjun's villain phase. So we'll go ahead and draw that encounter now. And we get Overrun. Each hero takes damage equal to the number of monsters he or she controls. Well, that's not the worst one to draw right out of the gate because uh, Alyssa has no monster, so she takes no damage. Arjun only has the one monster drawn, so he takes one damage. And now that Cobalt Skirmisher will activate. Played this game so much now I know what all these monsters do. <laughs> so the Cobalt Skirmisher is not going to move. He's just going to stand right where he is and throw a Javelin at Arjun. And he's going to get a plus nine on that attack. That's a pretty high plus, so he's going to have to roll pretty low to miss. And got a 7. 9 plus 7 is 16. I think that just misses. Yeah, Arjun's AC is uh, 17, so that's going to miss. And luckily, there's no consequence for a miss, so it's just a miss. That's the way it should be. Now it's going to be Alyssa's turn. So let's see. Alyssa has a movement of 6. So let's see if she can get up here by the Cobalt Skirmisher. I think she can. So she's she's on this square. So if she goes one, two, three, four, five, yeah, she can make it to the Cobalt Skirmisher with room to spare. So we're just going to have her move up to the Cobalt Skirmisher and have her use her careful attack. I love this ability that she has to just uh, automatically deal one damage without having to roll for it. So that's what we're going to do. So the Cobalt Skirmisher goes down. And we're going to take the Cobalt Skirmisher's XP, add that to our experience pile. So we'll just say that this is going to be our experience pile. And she's going to use her Scout ability. Alyssa can also explore without being on an unexplored edge. So we'll go ahead and draw that tile for Alyssa. It's going to be a black tile, so another encounter coming our way. But first, a monster. And she gets a spider. So we'll place the spider card down there, grab a spider for a pile of monsters, place it on the bone pile of the newly placed tile, and she will have an encounter, but let's uh, update our sheet for Alyssa. So she didn't use a healing surge. Uh, she did move. She then attacked. She will now get to draw a treasure, and let's hope it's an item. And it's a blessing, uh, or a fortune. Play this immediately. Place this card face up on either the encounter deck or the monster deck. The next time a card would be drawn, draw this instead. Okay, so we're going to use this right away. Obviously, we have to play it immediately. And we're going to use it on top of the encounter deck so that instead of drawing an encounter this turn, we draw this fortune and the encounter doesn't happen. So... For Alyssa, uh, again, she did explore. She got a black tile. She got a spider. She has no conditions. We did get an encounter, but we were able to... Uh, I'm going to just put YF. Yes, we got one, but a fortune canceled it. And she has a spider. So normally we would do the, uh, the encounter now, but since we were able to use the fortune to cancel it, we're just going to go to the spider. So the spider's tactics are that if it's adjacent, then it does that thing. If it's not, uh, then if it's within one tile, it's going to attack with the acidic web. It'll do one damage if it hits, slow down the uh, slow down Alyssa in this case, and it'll pull itself adjacent to her. 
So the, the spider is within one tile, so it's going to attack Alyssa with a plus 11. So that's uh, pretty unlikely to miss. So that's an 11 plus 11, which is a 22. And what we'll do though, I'm debating if I should use this now. So we have this, Alyssa has this utility power that just basically says, oh, actually, never mind, we can't use it. It has to be used when the an adjacent monster, so yeah, never mind, we can't use it. So it hits, and it pulls itself adjacent to Alyssa and slows her down. So we'll put a slowed token there next to Alyssa. And so she now has this condition. She is slowed. And that will continue until the end of her next hero phase. So right here at this point, it'll go away. Uh, the spider hit her, so it did one damage, taking her down to seven. So that is the end of uh, Alyssa's villain phase and the end of turn number one.